So, is there some phrase or something bad the person said that when you are trying to keep your boundary, you keep repeating it and keep repeating it in your head so that you don't go back into it? Um, I had that question today. Hey guys, Sarah K. Ramsey here to help you find love and success after a toxic relationship. About to do something with my hubby. Uh, so you had to listen to the live for a second. Um, but I wanted to answer this question. So, um, the best, it is helpful to um, keep track of the bad things that happen in the relationship somewhat so that you stay away, so you keep your boundaries, so that you don't fall back into it so you don't slip into delusion of oh there's hope or oh there's there's so many good things about them so you don't fall in love with potential again okay because that's our danger spot in toxic relationships we fall in love with potential fall in love with the promises and ignore the patterns okay so it can be very helpful to write down patterns of behavior and that is actually more helpful than replaying one instance over in your head. Because I'm guessing the, the, the instance that was in your head is very, very hurtful and makes you feel bad about yourself and makes you lose confidence and makes you doubt who you are and makes your blood pressure rise and all those sorts of things, okay? So playing that one instance over and over and over again can sometimes do more harm than good. Now, the greatest harm is the toxic person, right? So anything you can do to keep up your boundaries and prevent you from getting sucked back in is the right solution. It just is, okay? Because that's the greatest harm, okay? But you also want to have a healthy rela healthy relationships in your outside life and healthy relationships with yourself in your head, okay? That's equally important. So the answer to the question is, if you have to replay the instance in your head to keep up your boundary, then do what you need to do, girl. Okay? I'm cool with that. A better scenario is if you can recognize patterns of things that happened and write them down. Your brain is not designed to keep you happy. Your brain is designed to keep you safe. Okay, and I want you to imagine that there's a beach and beautiful sand and beautiful water and beautiful trees and beautiful fruit and everything is perfect. And then you see a crocodile. What is your brain going to focus on? The crocodile, of course, because you don't want to die. And so your brain is designed to focus on what will keep you safe. Okay, sometimes that can be helpful. Like if that means it keep make if you're early on in the stages and you you keep up, it makes you keep the boundaries within the relationship. But sometimes it can be really stressful, right? It's hard on our bodies to always have crocodiles in our heads, and so you want to eventually get to a place that you can recognize: is the crocodile in my house or in my head? Is the crocodile in my house or in my head? Is the crocodile in my house or in my head? First step: getting them out of your house, <laughs> and the second step is getting them out of your head. So whatever you need to do early on to keep your boundaries, you know, you're almost like in a survival strategy at that point. But eventually, what you feed will grow. And you have been feeding in your head the toxic person for a long time, feeding them your energy, feeding them your thoughts, feeding them um, your hopes, feeding them your dreams. So eventually, as quickly as possible, you want to fill your head with your own dreams, your own hopes, your own um, goals. You want to give your brain better problems to solve. Because your brain is designed to keep you safe, not to keep you happy. So your brain has been trying to solve the problem of the toxic person for a long, 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 long time. Okay? So eventually... Whatever you have to do, what, what is it, triage? Well, like in a medical center where it's like an emergency? Is that right? Oh, he said yes. <laughs> um, uh, my husband's sitting beside me for those of you who aren't on the live at the, at the beginning. Um, yeah, so eventually, at, at the beginning, when you're trying to um, keep yourself safe, you're in triage, right? So whatever you need to do in triage so you don't die, right, in a medical sense, right? Um, okay. That's not, you don't want to live in triage. You don't want to live in um, emergency. You want to thrive, not just survive. You want to have a life. You want to have an abundant life. You want to feel 
full of hope, um, real hope, not hope that the toxic person will change, but hope that you have the ability to change your life. Hope that helps. Hope you have a great day.